Um, so I'm going to take a, what will be a, hopefully a, a 20 minute ha -ha, romp um, through uh, the common data environment. So why? Why do we need a common data environment? Because we're told to, is the easy answer. So back in 2007, when BS1192 came out, it told us that when we're working collaboratively, we should use, and this is just in, in, in exchange of, of uh, digital data, we should use this thing, a common data environment. And it hasn't gone away. PAS3, for the OPEX and strategic stages of an asset's lifetime, tells us that we must use a common data environment. PAS2 tells us that we must use a common data environment. But of course, that doesn't actually tell us why we should use a common data environment. So it's really all of these things. It is those phrases that you've heard time and time again. It's making sure that we all have access all those collaborating on a project have access to the same information at the same time. It's hopefully starting to control the collaborative process. I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go on. It's allowing visibility of how people are performing. And it's this thing, it's this single source of truth for the project. So the other thing that you already have gathered from the fact that it's not just now data for the design and construction period, is that the common data, data environment is something, or some things, because it's not a single entity, it doesn't have to be, that runs from actually the strategic stages where you may not even have a project yet, through the bit that it's always, you know, it's, it's, it's been doing for a while, that design and construction period, and most importantly, out through the asset's lifetime. So what is a CDE? So I was being teased earlier. Common data environment, that's just Dropbox, isn't it? So, well, actually, well, you know, let's, 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 let's be clear. You know, BS 1192, 2007, says that on a tiny project, it can literally be somebody's server. But what I hope to be able to do is to talk to you and to convince you that a common data environment should be able to do very much more than just be a repository of information. So a reminder, at level two, what are we being asked to do? What are those five parts, soon to be six, a sixth part of 1192 coming as well, which will be um, about health and safety, about, about uh, uh, um, the risks involved and so on. But we've got five parts of 1192. We've got uh, the CIC protocol. We've got the DPAL, uh, MBS, uh, uh, BIM stuff. We've got, you know, we've got a raft of documentation which together define what it is that we're supposed to do. So we author in our BIM originating softwares, whatever they may be. We check our work and we federate those models. We coordinate, we clash detect, and then we federate. And from the federated model, we still produce a set of 2D contract documentation and form of PDFs. This is the bit, so, so we've got documentation, so your CD needs to be able to deal with documentation. You've got the bit that's different, we've now got data. So asset data at the moment in the form of Kobe. And at the completion of each deliverable, we're told that we must upload native files to define that deliverable. And all of this must sit within, we're told, a common data environment to allow 
that collaboration to take place. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. So it must, so I would argue that a common data environment needs to be able to deal with each of these bits. It needs to be able to store, store this information, the 2D information. So it's still, it is still electronic document management as well as the other things. It needs, really importantly, to be able to deal with data, and in particular with COVID. And it needs to be able to record and share all the latest information. So these are the key areas that we think that a CDE ought to, ought to be able to provide. It needs to be able to provide document control. It needs to be able to provide project controls. It needs to be able to deal with models, the BIM bit. And it also needs to be able to deal with data coming direct from site, so mobile data. So at the very least, I would say that as well as being a repository, that the CDE ought to be able to record the who's done what and when. But it also ought to be able to help you to define what the deliverables for each team member are going to be, then monitor whether you're getting what you've asked for. Validation, or, or as, so this is now actually just changed around, verification and valid, validation. So you ought to be able at least to verify whether the information coming is in the format you know, are we actually getting the data that we thought we were going to get? And, of course, it does need to be able to record what, what's come along. And, of course, part of the control of process should be tools to help you comply with the 1192 system of sharing information. So, from work in progress, this is stuff that you're doing, within your company, to shared information. I'm now going to allow this to be coordinated, flash effect, whatever it happens to be, to published, which just means that it's now, it's now a, a, a document satisfying something like a planning application or, or a you know, contract document for you know, one of the deliverables is defined in the EIR. And finally, to archive. So that process ought to be able to be monitored and approvals recorded. And you should be able to do this through a series of effectively workflows. So that's one of the things that we, we would expect a good CDE to be able to do. We also have a, a procurement process set out in PAS 1192, part two. So that talks about the fact that you know, after we've got our organizational requirements or asset requirements. Once we had a job, the employer puts together as part of, so it's, it's actually the, the old traditional procurement route, you still have sets of employer's requirements, but now to define the soft deliverable, we have EIRs. To define what's required in terms of the documents, data, and models. Second, the high level says that we'd respond, the design and construction teams respond, first of all, with a pre contract BIM execution plan, which includes evidence of your capacity to deliver what's being asked for. And then a post award, we're told that that should now include, so, so at, at this stage, each company will say who they're employing on a job and what they're expecting those employees to do at each work stage. And then post-award, you have a post-contract BIM execution plan and a master information delivery plan, which then sets out what each company will be delivering and when. So it's the coordinated version of each of those, uh, each of those task information delivery plans. So we would expect the whole of that process, that definition of task information delivery plans, master information delivery plans, to be accommodated within a CDE. <coughs> so, certainly in terms of beginning to set out what, what traditionally has been done in an Excel spreadsheet. You know, everybody's done this for years. They've said, I'm going to do these, I'm going to deliver these things at these stages, and it'll be these people that do it. So, what we're saying now is this should come into the common data environment, and... <coughs> those deliverables be monitored. 
So it will say, well, you said you were going to deliver this. Has that happened? Yes, it has. No, it hasn't. And be able to report on that. So the EIR's BPs should be accommodatable within the accommodation environment, and the accommodation environment should be able to help you to do these things. And, of course, these matrices of task information delivery plans defining what the model deliverables are, what the data deliverables are, all ought to be able to be accommodated as well, as should the ability to federate models and do all the things that you would expect to be able to, to do within that. So, you know, I would also argue that that ought to be in IFC format. So we know from part four, which defines the COBE deliverables, well, defines how the COBE deliverables might be but we're going to have a whole bunch of exchanges of COBE information. Again, defining what the COBE deliverables are and monitoring whether you are getting those and federating the COBE information from a variety of sources, a common data environment ought to be able to do that. So in the same way that every document, you'll see the most recent version of that document, but every single previous version of that document is stored within a common data environment. In the same way that you can do that, you should be able to interrogate each field within COBE and see the entire history, so if you've got the latest one at the top, but see the entire history of who's done what and when within COBE. So, you should be able to RAG report. You've defined, so at the start of the job, as part of putting together your requirements for each person. So, you know, every, every contractor has this awful thing. They've had an EIR, which hopefully includes what the COVID deliverables are going to be, and the client hasn't just said, I want everything. Um, you've had an EIR, you've got your COVID deliverables, you may have a supply chain of two, three hundred different companies, each of whom has to do a little bit. So you have to divvy up that work. You have to tell your supply chain and all the members of the design and construction team who's doing which bits of COVID. And then you have to reassemble those. You know, it's a huge task. So you need to be able to federate your COVID. And you need, when you do that federation, you need to have something which tells you you previously had a piece of information here. It's now a different piece of information in, the, in your latest upload. Which one do you want? And you need to be able to record who's done that. And of course, you need to be able to rag report on that information, see how many, see how many items, how many fields within Kobe are incomplete that you thought should be complete at the given work stage, and report on that and set tasks if people are beginning to perform. So all of these things are, you know, things which actually have been around for a, for a while, you know, task setting and so on within the, within common data environments in terms of documents, but are only starting to be the case within the data side of things. So that's pretty much where I think a CD should be now. But what next? So um, this is my plea that I always put in. We, we, we've taken a big plump that COBE is really important. Um, so why? Why don't you do what's relatively easy and go direct from authoring software A, map the bespoke fields within that authoring software to the bespoke fields within your FM software? Why don't you just do that? Because you can do that, and lots of people are doing that. That'll get you a perfectly decent set of single asset information. But it misses the big picture. The big picture is that we are heading to a much more open data world where having non-proprietary data stru structures like IFC and its subset, COBE, which allows you to do much more interesting things. So we've invested heavily in a new non-SQL database. That's a bit more like Netflix now, where you can say, oh, you know, I want to see a map data film with a car chase and look for all of those things. And over the coming years, we will start to enable you to compare data sets because they're in COVID. So that whether you are dealing with a school in Land's End 
or a school in John O'Groats done with completely different softwares, different teams using different softwares, different FM tools, and indeed for all the schools that you happen to run in your academy system or whatever it happens to be these days, um, you can do your comparison of your asset. You can do a search on that boiler type across all of those assets because it is in a known structured format. So that's why this is so important. And of course, big data is coming. We already know, we, you know, the last budget, 15 million towards whatever the digital built for it in project and BIM level three will be. We don't know yet. But we do know that they're talking about cross-sector data. So again, having structured data that isn't just relating to a single asset, but is relating to all your assets, becomes vitally important. So we had the map. Obviously, that's now funded as well, which is great. But we had the map So uh, last February uh, for the strategy for what Level 3 will be. At the beginning of that, you'll see there's this thing, level 3A, which is just level 2, but with using IFC as the exchange mechanism. So it's centered around IFC. Moving forward, we know that IFC will, or developments on IFC, will form the basis of what level 3 is going to be. So I sit on the BIM Technologies Alliance, that you know, subgroup to the BIM Strategy Group of the software vendors, and they've made it clear to us time and time again, and we have asked, that IFC will become more and more important. So we've centered what we do for our common data environment around IFC and the open structured formats. And this allows the more clever stuff. So where are we going? DPAL's, uh, the, the uh, MBS toolkit, is just finishing now. They're finishing their piece of work. But of course, Something defined within a client, uh, you know, by the client within the MBS toolkit, because we're beginning to have structured data, we'll be able, so one of our tasks for the coming year is to allow us to import the IFC from the digital toolkit to populate our information plan. So these things are, are on, on the way. So this is really where we, where we think we are now. So we, we use IFCs, we extract Kobe first off from the IFC. We can also take Excel spreadsheets, obviously, and federate those in as well. We've got some clever stuff with that. But this is where we are right now. So we've, we kind of think we're level 3A compliant as we stand. It's a kind of a more sensible way to go. We're also working on a really interesting project for Innovate UK called the Tier to Tier project. And this is just the start of how we begin to get a much, you know, so, so the common data environment until now is this sort of closed thing. You shut stuff, shut stuff, stuff in there and you extract stuff out, but it's pretty closed. Data doesn't really flow from one common data environment to another. And we're just starting this journey again based around open formats of working out, so this is about uh, subcontractor and supplier information coming in in a more fluid way and, you know, again, monitoring what's defining what you're expecting, monitoring what's coming in, coming in a much more fluid way from all the suppliers and subcontractors to the common data environment. And indeed, of course, they'll then be able to, to shunt information off to a whole bunch of different common data environments on different projects. So, as time goes on, does this mean that the common data environment will disappear? Because some people think that it does. I would say this, wouldn't I? I don't think it does. I think you will always need something to represent the asset in the digital world. So let me give an example. If you relied upon an individual set of servers, company servers, perhaps a manufacturer's server, and you had nice fluid connections between all of those, surely that's, that, that's a way to go. But of course, what then happens if, for example, somebody goes bankrupt, that data's gone, what happens to the history of all those different versions of data? So you are always going to need, I think, something to represent the asset. 
it's a much more fluid thing than it is now, but it's, it's, still, it's still a common data environment that represents the asset. But as we move forward, that common data environment becomes effectively a broker of information. It defines what you're getting in from the internet, what's going out to the internet. It relates to data from other sectors. This is, incidentally, don't think this is about to be there. You know, this, this is five, ten years away so, to, get to, to get to this kind of stage. But that's where it's going. That's, what, that's the plot that we're trying to, trying to, you know, the path that we're trying to, to, to plot out of how we get to this much more fluid data. data. Well, so an example of what I'm talking about is, let's say um, you have a courthouse. At the moment, your model data uh, is, is, you know, you'll have a model, you'll give the model a status. But actually, you need to get to a state where the various elements of that model can perhaps have different security groups, different statuses, so that you can trade that data out of the internet in different ways. So if you've got a courthouse, you might, for example, want to let the public know how you get from the reception to courtroom 10 on the eighth floor, and you might want to make that open to the internet, to the Google Maps of the interior, which is, is on the way. But you certainly wouldn't want to release the information about the judges' chambers or the barristers' corridors and chambers to the public. So you know, this, this idea that you... The, the common data environment becomes your way of controlling where data goes. That's where I think we're going in the longer run. So, in summary, I've done jolly well for me. So, a, we know this. The common data environment is a requirement of level two. A good common data environment actually not just should, but must deal with not with individual elements, so not with... So you couldn't say, well, I've got one common data environment that deals with documents, and then I've got this other thing that deals with data. It's a single entity. It's a single source of the truth. So a good CD needs to be able to deal with documents, models, data, and mobile data entry. I think a good CD should not just be a repository. It shouldn't just record who's done what and when at each work stage, but should also help you to define what each party's deliverables are, then monitor whether you're getting them, and then validate whether, you're, whether the information's coming in. A CDE is whole life. It's from before inception all the way through, a, through an asset's lifetime. And of course, actually, the, the reality is um, you know, whilst I'm sure every CDE provider would love it if you just use their system. The reality is we need to move through open standards, will help with this enormously, we need to move towards a much more fluid ability to move information from CDE to CDE. So that again is the future, it's one of the things that we know we've got to do. So structured, shareable digital data, open BIM, will allow the CDE to transact. So that, you know, that's really the, the message that I want to get across. So there we go. Thank you very much indeed.